Welcome to day number 306. And our guest today is Garen Baker. Garen, welcome. How are you, man? How are you? Good to uh, see you, Eric. <laughs> nice to see you. What, what are you going to do for us today? Uh, I'm going to do a master copy of a famous Ilya Repin painting. It's actually a, a head study portrait. A head study portrait of it's a Repin painting, a master copy. Yeah, master. It's actually a pretty famous one. So uh, All right. I'm going to keep it a surprise. Everyone will recognize it when they see it, though. Uh, outstanding. Well, let's get right into it. I, I'm very excited about that. So should I switch now? Yeah, sure. Let's All do right. it. Give me one second. I'm going to switch. All right. So, so while you... Garrett's doing that, uh, this is day number 306. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plein Air Magazine. We're here every day, in case you're seeing this for the first time, 306 days in a row, twice a day, uh, at 12 noon on Facebook and YouTube and uh, Instagram and so on. Uh, just go to Facebook or YouTube, search Streamline Art Video. Uh, if you would follow me, please, Eric Rhodes at uh, Instagram. That would be very, very helpful. Okay, more on other stuff later, but let's get right to Garen Baker. Garen, take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. So today I'm going to do uh, Ilya Repin's uh, Mazorsky portrait. I don't, this is actually a, a photograph of Mazorsky. He was a famous Russian composer. Uh, and um, I actually got the story from a good friend of mine. Uh, Jim Gurney, uh, he wrote a wonderful blog piece about this portrait. Uh, the actual uh, painting that Repin did is uh, this one. And there's Mazorsky himself. Um, so uh, Repin did this painting of Mazorsky, obviously from life. I'm doing it from a nice photograph that I took uh, at the Tretnikov Gallery in Moscow. I've seen uh, it in person, and oh, I want to... Yeah. I, I think the story is that he did that on his deathbed. Uh, well, he had four sittings set up. Mazorsky sort of uh, was a, quite a drinker and uh, was mad at times, uh, you know, crazy at times. And he uh, ended up in a hospital. And, um, and Mazorsky, uh, Repin, had uh, four sittings scheduled with him. He did three, and this is what he accomplished in three sittings. Uh, and then on the fourth sitting, he arrived to uh, continue and finish the painting, and Mazorsky was no longer with us. So uh, that's, uh, that's the story I read from Jim Gurney's blog, and I think I'll go with it. All so, right. So um, it looks like you're on a wooden pallet, and what yeah, you so laid down some oil. What did you lay down? So I'm, I've got a, a piece of uh, portrait linen, a Glossons 13, that I've taped to a board. I usually tape it to a rigid board and then I can store them or stretch them later or frame them or you do what I need. But most of them end up in my flat files for easier storage. Um, I have a beautiful cherry wood uh, palette. It's probably, I don't know, maybe maybe 30 inch, uh, 32 inches long by maybe uh, 20, 20 or so inches wide. It's a beautiful block of cherry wood that I have on a rolling tabaret around my studio. Uh, my shelf of colors that I've been building up over the years um, go from white to black, a series of warms, my neutrals being my uh, two browns, and then my cools. And basically, uh, I'm really interested in the understanding of light. And so just to jump right in, because, you know, Eric, we only got about, uh, what, 40 minutes or so? <laughs> yeah, 40, 45 minutes or so. Well, Basically, I'm going to approach this as though uh, this uh, great Russian composer is sitting in front of me. Are you yeah. going to do a copy of the master portrait or are you going to do yes. a copy of the photograph? No, I'm going to, what you're seeing now is a Repin's painting of Mazorsky. And I'm going to do a, a you know, a, my rendition of it. I really, you know, Repin is a high mark. <laughs> so. Yeah, really. That's tough. <laughs> I, well, I, and I'm so happy you're going to send it to me when it's done. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we'll see. But uh, I'm going to do uh, looking at big shapes and uh, jump right in. I'm a pretty quick painter, but uh, an hour or less is a pretty good challenge. So yeah, it sure we'll is. What, we'll see what we get done. Reppin had, uh, you know, three or four, three sittings with him. Um, I'm going to just uh, look for some big shapes. Mass in some big areas, get the right shapes going. 
understanding. Um, one of the things I do a lot with my students at the Art Students League is to really, especially when dealing with the head, you know, portraits, it's really important to get a sense of the skull, you know, understanding where the cheekbones are and the axis of the roundness of the oval, the cranium of the skull, very important. The axis of the tilt of the head, the axis of the cheekbones, the eye sockets, really trying to understand what's happening structurally underneath. No outlines, just really trying to see some big shapes. I should mention that uh, I, Garen and I just recorded a podcast that's coming out next week. You're going to want to hear that because he's got a great story uh, behind his life as an artist, and you're going to want to tune into the Plein Air podcast for that. That was yes, great. he is also a Plein Air painter. <clears throat> that was great fun, Eric. That was really wonderful. Actually, we we uh, we in, ended up uh, conversing longer than the podcast was able to. Yeah, that was fun. So, so now call, you're mixing a green for what what purpose? Well, I'm here? looking at the shadows. You know, they look rather warm, but actually I'm thinking that there's a lot more cool in them. So I'm starting with the cool end of my palette. You know, the blues, cobalt blue, maybe a little cerulean blue, but obviously that's too rich. So I want to knock it down. I want to go more towards the grays, more towards the neutrals. So I mix, obviously, complementary color opposite on the color wheel. For all of you who are familiar with that. And that's going to sort of knock it down for me. Give me a more grayer, greener gray tone. And if it goes too green, I'm going to grab maybe a little bit of red. Warm it up just a slight. But what I'm looking for are these neutrals. And in a big way, I'm just going to start massing in. Not worrying about detail or features. Just looking at those big shadow areas. Looks like you've changed to a big brush. Oh, yeah. Big brush. The real workhorse. You I know? should mention to you guys that if you leave comments, we're uh, giving away prizes for comments. Today's prize is a pair of value specs that help you see values. And uh, the winner of my book from the last broadcast is Mary Beatles from Georgia. Congrats, Mary. Make sure you tell us where you're from in the comments. I see Israel. I see uh, uh, Germany. I only tend to mention the ones outside of outside of the U.S., but don't be offended. We want to hear from you, too. We want to see where you're coming in from. One of your followers from the Art Students League is on. Oh, great. Maybe, probably several. So you also have to notice that there are these beautiful orbits, sort of cue balls <clears throat> inside a socket. Now, I'm not seeing that light green in the forehead. I'm trying to understand why you did that. Well, it's uh, we're playing chess a little bit. You know, in traditional painting, um, it's not, the, and, and even with Alla Prima, it's not necessarily that you're going for the final uh, sort of color that's going to be, uh, evident at the, you know, when you see the painting at the end, what you're looking for is that sort of transparent underpainting. And um, so when I start to build up the lights, those cool shadows, those hints of cools behind um, sort of transitioning into the darker shadows uh, will help the warms, the rich warms that are going to eventually be in the light areas those are going to be more prominent. And so what I'm doing is, is I'm setting up my chess game. I'm okay. moving my, my pawns out. I'm not Somebody using... wants to know what size brush you're using, and there's somebody saying hello from Poland. Oh, cool. I'm using a number seven. It's a Robert Simmons. I love these. These are a real workhorse brush. Use Robert them Simmons together. brush. Somebody could put that in the comments. That'd be helpful. So I'm still staying in the shadows, staying in the cools. It's got these deep, sad eyes. That's the beauty of this repin painting is 
you know, he's able to paint behind the eyes, get to the soul of this man. And so amassing him, not really looking for detail, looking for big planes, big areas of light. Now I'm starting to work into the lights, these rich pinks, reds, yellows, white. And that's where I'll start to build my lights. All right. You can see that transition. There's a little bit of glare on the palette. I apologize. But you'll see these rich, this little red nose because he probably had just a little bit too much. Now the forehead. What, what was the ground uh, on, on your canvas? What, what so color did you use? I just grayed it off with a little... Um, black and blue, a little alizarin crimson to just neutralize it. Um, it's one of my uh, sort of go-to uh, ground tones. I very rarely work on a white surface. Yeah. You can see as I start to bring in these warms, that cool, they start to, the cool start to be managed. And the, it's all about the relationships Big forehead, this side. You have no fear. No, just put it in. So make a mess and push it around like a sculpture. What are your whites? You've got, looks like three whites. Well, I've got, no, I've got a Naples yellow deep. I've got one of my favorite, uh, it's called an ivory white. I think uh, Holbein makes it. And then I have a Rembrandt titanium white. I also use a stack white when I'm really looking to build up. What stack is the white. why do you use the ivory white? Uh, the ivory white gives me the opportunity to um, not necessarily use a, a cool white, which is the titanium sometimes has too much cool into it. And so by using the ivory white, I'm able to play both ends of the spectrum in terms of the white, have a warm white and a cooler white. But obviously, I'm also always varying these transitions, that beautiful rich. Now I have to be careful with the drawing. Placement is everything. Got to, you know, slow down a bit. Make sure my ear is the right space and the right placement. Simple. Turn the form, always turning the form. Now I'm gonna to have to block in some of this larger area of the darks because it's through the darks that you actually read the lights. And it's interesting, those greens don't look so green anymore when you put no, no. warm colors in there. Absolutely not. It's all about relationships. So now these darks in here, all these darks and this crazy hair, you know, he looks like he just woke up at a, out of a stupor. <laughs> now this dark side on this side of his forehead, it's going to help you to see this side of his head. So it's all relationships. That's what Reppin was so, so brilliant at, building all these relationships. Drawing, his beard. His muzzle under the nose, not focusing so much on the lips, but focusing on the muscle and the bone structure underneath. When you were over in Russia, did you go to Reppin's studio? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. We're going to take our group there in September. It's pretty yeah, going to be paint. We're going to paint on the grounds of the studio, too. I, I kind of chose this one because I knew you were going there, and I'm so jealous. I was there three years ago. And uh, we had, we were, myself and a handful of other plein air painters, uh, land, New, New England landscape painters primarily, um, that I paint with every winter up in uh, northern Vermont. March, we, we go up to Jeffersonville and paint where uh, great New England painters used to go. But we were invited to by five Russian landscape painters. Uh, one brilliant, she's amazing, Ilya Robokova, she and her, some of her friends invited us to come and paint, and we, they took us to the countryside outside Moscow, 
and we traipsed along the footsteps with uh you know shishkin and places where they painted yeah. literally standing in those same landscapes it still looks like the 19th century outside Moscow. Yes. we're going to the same places uh we're gonna go to those the little town outside of moscow which is where they all painted we're going to be going to the academic dasha in the center of the country also some wow. other small towns Oh my God. And, and we're even going to paint in the cities. Hello, New Zealand and Switzerland. How long Welcome. are you looking for, Eric? How long is the trip? I'm sorry? How long will you be in Russia? Two weeks. Oh, my God. Fabulous. And, and I've only got seven seats left. So oh. it's, <laughs> we're taking, taking 40, 48 people. Oh, it's, it's incredible. You know, the, the painting literacy in... Um, in Russia, you know, that the just is a great history of academic as well as, you know, 19th century, you know, Repin is just one of them. There's just just a, a host, Krumskoy and Shishkin and Levitan. I mean, it's just it's just really unbelievable. You don't really most of us don't know Russian art. I didn't even know it until I went over and I got to go to the museums. We have uh, we're visiting the Tretikov Museum as well as the um the uh, the Great Russian Museum at St. Petersburg, and we even have a private cocktail party and viewing in the in the Hermitage when it's closed. Wow! How'd you how'd you hook that up, Eric? You know, it has something to do with owning <laughs> fine art connoisseur. I'm guessing. Yeah, I tell you. <laughs> well, you're treating people to some really amazing stuff. So now I'm looking at those round. Orb, those round cue balls of the eyes catching the light on the side. Look at that rich, you know, painting, especially portrait painting. And I'm working from a master um, as a copy, but um, it's really a conversation. You know, the really great ones, you know, by Sargent and Velasquez. I mean, I know that wonderful one, you know, um, in the Museum of Metropolitan that fabulous Velasquez, those paintings, those portraits, um, Lady Agnew that Sargent did, the really, the really brilliant ones are the ones where that conversation was so intuitive and so spontaneous. You know, Garen, when I was over in Russia back in March, I shot uh, footage for a documentary that I'm working on. And I, I interviewed, sat down with the heads of the museums, the heads of the schools. And uh, they told me, the head of the Tretikoff Museum told me that um, over a third of, of Repin's paintings have never been found. And they think most of them are in America. Wow. Oh, the search. So, you know, if you have a grandmother that has some paintings, you know, or a great grandmother or something, go look for them. You might, might have a treasure. Well, you know, I'm uh, part of a little troop of, uh, you know, painters here in the Northeast, and we're sort of the raiders of the lost ark of of uh, searching out great paintings and, uh, you know, uh, finding where they are and calling people up and saying, hey, can we come and look at your collection? <laughs> I, f I found a, a, a painting, I can't tell you much about it publicly, but I found a painting that's been lost, a, a very major important painting that's been lost for over 100 years. Wow. It's amazing how quickly this is coming together. Well, of Hawaii. I mean, you know, we're try trying to get you know, a good amount in, I'll probably, you know, have a, uh, maybe a, an hour or two or maybe an hour more, you know, after we end our broadcast today. Um, and, uh, I'll send it along a picture of it. Yeah. You can post the final in, in the comments once it's done and there's going to be more people watching the replays than watching live. And, oh, great. and so you can post it tonight or tomorrow or something and everybody will get a chance to see it. Amazing how the form is coming together already. So now we're going to start pulling this head into space. 
by using some of these lighter cool grays behind his head. What do you mean pull it into space? What's that mean? Well, I mean, well, I'll do it. You'll see what I mean. Yeah, uh, okay. right behind his head. Oh, background. So it's these relationships again that Reppin was just a real master of. I mean, when you see his, you know, ambitious, large compositions, just pulling these and also the playing of edges. It's a conversation. It talks to you and you respond and it says again what it needs and you respond again. One thing I love about the Russians is they have no fear oh, yeah. uh, and they are probably better trained than any artists in the world. And I, and I know that's an insult to you because you train at one of the greatest well, schools. I, you know, my my uh, grandfather was uh, Russian. <laughs> you know, he came here as a, uh, you know, uh, in the 19, uh, 1902. So, in fact, when I went to Russia, uh, they actually found out, you know, that I was named after a very famous Russian. Uh, let's see, Eric. Let's see your your. Uh, knowledge of uh, world history. So I'm actually named after the first man in space. You are? Yep. Do you know who that was? Well, I wanted to say uh, Yuri. Uh, there you go. You got him. What's his last Yuri? Uh, Gagarin. What is it? Gagarin. Oh, really? Yep. So I was, I was yeah, there's a uh, there was there's a Russian museum in Moscow. You got to see it when you were over there. Probably it was the the um, I don't remember what it was called, the Impressionist Museum or something. And there was a great big portrait of him. Yep. Um, and uh, they've since closed that museum down. So when I went there and they found out that I was named after that Russian cosmonaut, um, because. You know, my grandfather was from Russia, my grandmother, um, you know, East European, Russian. On my mother's side, they were Austrian. And um, when they found out what my name was and why I was named Garen, <laughs> they made quite a deal out of it. Put me on the news and everything in, in Russia. <laughs> I think anybody has a chance to study with Garen at the Art Students League or privately or otherwise should do it. I mean, look at this. Amazing. Well, my class at the League, I've been teaching there a few years. And, um, you know, the League is one of those great American art institutions. It's been around since 1885. You name it, who's in American art, going back to William Merritt Chase and Robert Henri and George Bridgman, Norman Rockwell, Jackson Pollock. I mean, I can go on and on. And uh, they have an amazing sort of um, faculty now. Uh, Max Ginsburg teaches there. Uh, Ricky Muhika, I teach there. Dan Thompson teaches drawing there, if anyone knows Dan Thompson's work. Uh, it's just, uh, just an incredible, incredible faculty. Well, the fact that you're on that faculty is pretty amazing. Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> you know that means you're one of the better artists in 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 America and in New York. Well, it's not an easy thing getting on there, but um, um, you know, with COVID now, we're doing all of our all of our classes online. Actually, they've done a lot of renovations to get the school ready for when we all, you know, can get back in there. Um, and so now. And actually, me and um, a handful of other instructors were really experimenting early on with how to do um, 
you know, high quality Zoom classes with demos like this. I'm able to paint along with my students and draw along with the students. Um, and so that's uh, kind of with some really young technical people that are, you know, that are savvy about, you know, gaming platforms and high resolution um, broadcasting. You know, I've set up a little bit of, with a little bit of help in my studio to kind of know how to learn how to do this. This uh, sort of split screen. It's kind of a, a new, a brave new world we're all in for a little bit. Yeah. So I've learned quite a bit. Oh, it's beautiful, rich color. So I'm just massing in, just massing it in. His beard's going to come down there. Looking, squinting, squinting, simplifying. It'll alter the color a little bit. A little <clears throat> I remember going to the Art Students League for the first time, and I felt like I was in hollowed halls. I mean, all the greats that have taught there. and Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's it's... I don't know if it's the original building, but I think it's been there since what, 1912 or something? Oh no, eight, 1885. Eric. 1885, and now what's happening is they're building a skyscraper over it, which is interesting. <laughs> well, it's already built. You know, the safe what we call in New York because you know I'm a New Yorker. The safety deposit box is in the sky. <laughs> sure. There's a huge one that just went up. Actually, this Nordstrom's is in there now, and the, on the ground floor, uh, the Art Students League is right next door. Um, and uh, in New York, you know, it's very, the airspace is very valuable. And the Art Students League was savvy enough a few years ago to sell the air rights, but to maintain in the long run, the North Light studios they have on the fourth and fifth floor. Yeah. My studio is on the fourth floor, uh, the coveted Studio 7, which is where all the, you know, masters of, representational painting to the 19th century taught studio seven is a is a kind of a you know it's coveted and uh, so all of those all of that north light uh just like i have in my studio here i built into this old post and beam barn and if we get a chance uh towards the end we're going to show your studio well you give me i mean on my website people are curious now um, they can go to my website and under on the um, menu, there's a there's a heading called studio. I have some great photos, great images of my studio. I've taken this 1790 property, um, old stone house, big carriage house, post and beam barn. Over the years, renovated it. And um, so there's some cool shots of my studio. But All I right. I put your website up at garenbaker.com. Oh, thanks, Eric. It's on the screen. So now we're going to find the center of his eyes, the center of that ball. Just going to indicate it. We're not just ready yet to, you know, get in there with all those details. We just want to find the placement, find the right placement. Now tell everybody what you were doing there with that angle. You went, you took your brush at an angle. You're trying to make sure you keep the line, the eyes lined up. Right. Remember the original drawing, the axis, and then the, this axis here, this axis versus this axis. In addition to the height of the ears, a lot of people when they do portraits, you know, they start right in there with the eyes, and they forget that the ears and the height, or or the placement of the ears in relationship to the head tells you tr a tremendous amount about the exact tilt. And the tilt tells you about the attitude and tells you so much about the gesture and the person's personality in terms of how they hold their head. And so all of these things are way more important than all of those details that we marvel at. Somebody asked how they can get information on your palette. Did you build that yourself? I did. I have several. So, oh, you do. Okay. Well, you probably could sell several if, if uh, <laughs> well, you want to take I, orders. I had a, a friend of mine who came across a 
nice big slab of cherry wood. And um, so I said, wow, that was gorgeous. This is going back a few years. And um, from that block of cherry wood, I, uh, it's about four, four and a half, five inches thick. I kind of built a tabaret around it. It's on a slight tilt. Nice. I built a guitar out of cherry wood. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right, let's move around because uh, what do we get? What are we at, Eric? Well, you're you're into about thirty minutes so far, so I'd say you got about 20, 20 25. Okay, let's get this side. I love these lost brush strokes. Boy, Reppin was really really quite adept at that, creating the character and personality of his sort of goatee here with the most effortless brush strokes. Oh, that's not an easy task. Catching the under shadow part, this here, the warmth of his lips kind of pursed through the light on the lower lip. So it's not as though you have to outline any of these things. You just got to get these things in the right, the right place. Remember you guys, if you leave comments, uh, we're giving away today a pair of value specs for, uh, uh, we're going to pick from the comments, uh, both in the replay and the live. And so make sure you leave a comment. Also, if you're from outside the country, Please say where you're from. Um, and any, everybody, we'd like to know where you're from. So it's nice to see where people are from. And if you would, if you're enjoying this and you think other people might enjoy it, go ahead and hit the share button uh, and definitely give Garen some positives with a like or a heart or a smile or something. That'd be nice. You can go to his website, garenbaker.com, to see his studio. We'll try at the end if we have time to show a little of it. We're here every day. If you're tuning in for the first time, we're here every day at 12 noon, five days a week on Facebook or YouTube. And you might be seeing it on other platforms too. You can find us by searching Streamline Art Video. My name is Eric Rhodes. And also we're on at three o'clock every day uh, doing uh, many of the 600 plus art instruction videos that we've created. And uh, we would love for you to check them out. They're free to, free to view at 3 o'clock, same place. So everything, Garen, starts with a foundation. Oh, yeah. You start with the form and the foundation. You don't start with the detail. And... <laughs> You know, I think a lot of people, if they were looking at this and copying this, the, the first place they would do is start by, you know, getting all that detail in early on. But if you well, don't get that foundation in, the detail just doesn't work. Yeah, you got to you, you sort of have to find uh, the volume of it first. You know, the the sense of it being an object, you know, a, a, a round skull, a round kind of bowling ball for you know for instance in space and that happens by that kind of earlier that earlier block in work and then once you're able to find that then you can start sculpting it and pushing things in their proper relationship um it's uh it's a it's a challenge always it's not something that um you know, uh, you can guarantee at every turn, but the more you play with it, the more you move it around, the more you find the shapes and the spaces. And when you put a piece of detail in, like a highlight, it feels voluminous. It feels like it takes up real space. Now, the other dilemma, Eric, because <laughs> this is the real deeper dilemma of really stellar portraiture and portrait work, 
is that part that Repin and Velasquez and Sargent, and even more, I mean, there are many of them, but they were able to, beyond the academic, beyond the literal detail of it, they were able to get at something that when you stand in front of that Duan de Perea by Velasquez, the Museum of Metropolitan, it's literally only 24, 30 inches. It's a small painting. But once you walk in that room, um, it takes over the entire space. Yeah. It just draws you to it. It's as though that servant or his slave, there's a debate about whether that model was his servant or his slave or he was paid, but it's as though he's still there. It's as though his spirit and his energy has been transfixed into that canvas. And that's, Eric, that's what makes great portrait painting. The same thing with uh, Lady Agnew. You know, if you've ever seen that painting, I think it's in Scotland now. I think that's where it resides, but it was in the, uh, the Frick Museum a few years ago and, and uh, it was in a traveling exhibition. But when you see that painting, uh, it's astounding how vivid, truthful, and honest that was, it was caught. And uh, so uh, that, for me, is the real essence of great portraiture, you know? I mean, uh, recently we had a great loss of uh, Nelson Shanks. He was a contemporary that was, you know, was honing in on those kinds of ideas. Um, my good, my, uh, my high school art teacher, Max Ginsburg, who I've remained very close and dear friends with over many, many years. He's after those kinds of things. Um, so it's, uh, yes, the academic is important. You know, good drawing, good solid understanding of form and value and temperature. Um, the real challenge though is to is to, Matt, is to get a lot of that good stuff under your belt. Um, Max Ginsburg is a legend. Oh, Max is, uh, oh, Max is Max. You know that, Eric. <laughs> uh, he's such a sweet man. And and he was the first video we did. We talked about this on the podcast, but he rehearsed for several days beforehand. He's a real pro. Yeah. I'm posting in the comments uh, how to get his video. Yeah. Well, Max is a real sweetheart, one of the most generous teachers. I mean, I, I, you know, I was a high school student when I first stumbled upon Max. Uh, it's a great story. I think we spoke about it in the in the uh, in the podcast. And um, so, uh, yeah, he teaches uh, alongside in the Art Students League, and still is has a you know waiting list of people to study with him. Max is a real wonderful, generous. A teacher that uh, will spend hours with you, you know? Yeah, I've had a, a great guy to learn from. I noticed that you're slowing down now. Oh, you're a little bit more careful about your precision. Still trying to get a little bit more accurate, you know? You don't want this to look uh, totally, you know, flabungent, you know? <laughs> but there's a funny story. So I have a, usually, you know, in, in less COVID times, I usually in my studio invite you know, painters to come and we book a model for, you know, a weekend and Max came up for a weekend. Here's a fun story about Max. And I have a wonderful friend. He came and he was like, oh my God, Max Ginsburg is going to be there. And I was like, yeah, yeah, Max is a, Max is a funny guy. And um, so he was very nervous because Max was there. <laughs> and um, so he, the model took a break and um and, he, and my friend, he walked over to me. He said, do you think Max would mind if I asked him to look at my painting? I was like, ask Max. I was like, sure, ask him. He don't care. Sure. And so Max, he brings Max over. He looks at the guy's painting. And uh, Max has, you know, got his sort of hand, head rested on his chin, you know, looking at it intently. And the guy starts explaining, well, you know, the drawing is off here and you know, this is all the, I, I know I tried to work out and Max looks at him and goes, you think that's that, you think that's all that's wrong with your painting? <laughs> <laughs> so Max was, you know, joking around. We were trying to have fun, but it's a wonderful human spirit with Max. Max is a very genuine, 
warm person. And very generous too. Yeah. He's such a sweet yeah. man. I love Max. So now I'm trying to play up those beautiful, you know, deep eye sockets that, that, that are here. And that upper lid that comes across. You got about 14 minutes left. Oh, my goodness. Oh, never, you're doing great. You're doing enough, great. Eric. We're loving this. Somebody asked how you keep your, how you clean your palate. I just uh, scrape it with a palate knife like this. All right. Do you ever use a razor on it? Well, just a palette knife. No, not on wood. And then oh, I wipe okay. it with a rag. See that? Clean, yeah. clean again. Let's get this beautiful kind of real. Hello, Sweden. Nice Russian. to have you here today. Sweden? Yep. Wow, that's great. We have a lot of we have a lot of people in Sweden, um, Israel, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, um, all throughout Europe, Japan. Once in a once in a while, we'll get somebody else in Asia. I haven't seen uh, Japan is mostly. I have a I have a student from Japan. Now that the Art Students League did their, you know, online, you know, with their uh, classes online, you know, we're kind of limited to um, students within the tri-state area, you know, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. Um, but now we have students from everywhere. I know it's really wonderful. I mean, we're all learning that. that I mean, this this show has got people in well, Watercolor Live, which starts this week. We have people in 39 countries. We have almost 1,700 people signed up. Wow. Amazing. I mean, it's a, the ability to touch so many lives, it's so wonderful. Yeah, yeah, it's really incredible. Especially, you know, art, you know, it's really... You know, so you never cool. let the paint dry on your palette, obviously. No, not in the mixing area. That's why the shelf of colors is built up. You know, I'm constantly scraping it down. It's, I don't know, a good friend of mine, you know, we were in high school together. He was a couple of years older than me, Steve. Have you ever seen his palette? Steve Assell's palette? It's built up about this high. <laughs> oh, yeah? In fact, sometimes there's hardly any room on it. He just mixes right on the surface of the canvas. I know some people let that paint pile up really really high that drives me nuts <laughs> hello italy hello norway hello south africa see when i start mentioning it all of a sudden people start netherlands they start saying okay i'm gonna speak up we like that thank you yeah, that's great somebody who's never made a comment before we're looking for you from today hello spain outstanding our guest today is Garen Baker, instructor at the Art Students League in New York. If you tuned in late, he's doing a copy of a master copy of a Repin portrait. Well, that was pretty slick, what you just did. <laughs> so these beautiful cools that I was playing with before, now they come into play to give me that hairline. Celeste says, I didn't get the paint pile up thing. A lot of artists will leave where you see the colors piled up. Instead of taking it off, once it dries, oh, yeah. they just put new color on top of it. And they keep doing it until it gets really, really high. Yeah, you know, oil paint is expensive. And <clears throat> yeah. so if you scrape your unused paint off, you can throw it away. That's, oh, my God, it's terrible. You're throwing away good hard-earned money by building up a layer of dry paint, like the shelf that you see here. Um, I can keep wet paint there because oil paint dries two ways. Oxidation, that means through the air, and absorption, that means on the surface. So if I block the surface by building up dry paint, there's nothing for it to absorb into. So I can keep wet paint on this area of my palette, up on its shelf, for several days. And um, this way, uh, you never really have to you know, throw away your paint. Obviously here where you're mixing, um, that you clear off, that you keep clean. Karen, they're asking me to have you do a video. 
Okay, let's do a video. <laughs> that's love how quickly. That's how quickly but things I, happen. But I tell you, I really love to do one from life because you know this. As much as this, we're all trying to behave and be smart and you know save lives and you know I really oh, last week I had a we had a model at the league and they're doing some videotaping of model sessions so that they can broadcast them. And they brought me in to work on the lighting with them and to play around with the poses. It was the first time in like, gosh, six, seven months that I've drawn from the model. I can't tell you how much we all miss it. And so uh, I'd love to do a video, Eric, but uh, we got to have a model pose. Maybe you'll pose. Yeah, okay. Well, we have lots of models we, we use. Um, yeah, I think, that, I think we should do it. Um, so... Okay. Coming down. Uh, somebody the asked what you do. You use a Peshad box uh, when I you're do. doing plein air. I do. I have three or four different sizes, uh, and we're probably coming, you know, to our time. We're probably about under six or seven minutes, right, Eric? Yeah, about six minutes. So let me just uh, play around with a couple of spots. I'll stop talking. And then I'll turn my camera and sort of pan through my studio. That might be fun. Now, this, I'm, I'm rushing this a little bit. I would much prefer to spend more time, and I will. But this gives you an idea. It's fun. Yeah, that's pretty. That's actually very beautiful, just as it is. It wouldn't need to be finished. Oh, thank you, Eric. I appreciate that. Oh, there's so much wonderful work he did here. He'd had more than an hour, though. Gosh darn it. <laughs> All right, Eric. Well, that's why these videos are so important. I mean, can you imagine if we had a video of rep and painting? Oh, my God. And 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 guys like you, you know, 200 years from now, people are going to – I know you're still going to be around, but uh, <laughs> it would be nice, you know, for people to have it. And, and I, I think what people don't understand is how special it is to be able to have that in their homes and to oh, be able yeah. to – to capture, you know, 30 or 40 years worth of painting expertise. Well, instead of me fiddling around, why don't I show a little bit uh, of my studio? Just pan my other camera around. All right, great. All right, great. I'm going to switch windows here. Okay. There we go. All right, you guys, first off, round of applause, thumbs up and applause for, for Garen Baker. Thanks so All much. All right. That was Okay, fun. let's do the studio. All right, so uh, let, let me take the camera out of here. Sorry about my hand. I can flip the, uh... <clears throat> there we go. Oh, it's gonna be a little shaky. Is yeah, okay, we can, we can handle it. Oh, I'm getting seasick. <laughs> There's a few paintings in progress. All right, wow. And that's a, a cityscape, sort of late in the afternoon. Here's a if finish. you guys listen to the podcast uh, comes out next week, I think uh, that I did with Garen, you'll hear about the stories about plein air painting in the streets in New York. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. This one is called... I can smell the fish in that painting. <laughs> it's called Salting the Herring. I go, uh, my wife and I, we try to get to the coast of Maine every year for a couple of weeks. And this was done actually from an iPad, a series of iPad movies that I took. Cool. Uh, is this uh, a sketch for a larger composition that I'm working on uh -huh. called uh, His Address? There's the block in for the painting. Nice. There's a couple of head studies. Whoops. Uh-oh. I'm losing you. No, we're here. Oh, great. Sorry. <laughs> well, you froze up for a second oh. there. Okay. Well, there, he there we oh. go. And I'll just okay. pan around. I'm sorry about the shakiness of it. All right. So here's an old post and beam barn. Beautiful. And a hallway to the carriage house. And I'll just walk over here. All right. There's a couple of paintings on an easel over there. Here's the setup that I have to, for today. My uh, laptop, big monitor, the camera that you guys were watching me on. My tabaret that rolls around my studio, the study I just did, 
my great sort of wonderful Hughes easel, which is awesome. Northern skylight that I cut into the hip roof of the barn. Now, what angle is that light at? Uh, it's a 45. Yeah, it's a hip roof. The, uh, okay. the barn, we basically just cut out and created a hip roof. And uh, I'll just switch this around. And there we have it. All right. Well, that's terrific. Let me see if I can get us both on here again. There we go. All right. Let me Aaron, just... we can't see your face, but I'm we will sorry. in a second. All right. There we go. That's better. All right. Now you're going to have to get down low. Yeah. <laughs> I there, you are. there we go. Well, Gary, you did a fantastic job. Thank you so much for being with us today on the show with no name. And, uh, <laughs> well, thanks, Eric. It was a lot of fun. I'm um, sorry I butchered a rep in, but uh, maybe I'll put another uh, 20 minutes you, or an hour into it. You did not butcher anything. That was fabulous. <laughs> Everybody give him hearts and applause and thumbs up. All right, Garen, uh, hang with me. I'm going to come back and, and talk to okay. you after I get off the air. Okay. All right. Garen Baker, our guest today, and you can find him at GarenBaker.com. Don't go away. Uh, I just want to tell you a couple of things. Uh, if you want to find all the videos, if you're new to us, we've got 306 days of videos there, times two, my 12 noon and the 3 p.m. Just go to YouTube and, and hit, look for search, Streamline Art Video and subscribe, and you can find them all there. All right. Um, if you're a watercolorist, make sure you check out American Watercolor Magazine. It's our online magazine. You subscribe free. Just go to AmericanWatercolor.net slash subscribe. We love having you guys here. The purpose of this is to keep you focused on something that you love or you want to learn about because uh, we know this has been a tough year, a tough last 12 months uh, or almost 12 months. And we've been here 306 days for you because we just want to keep lifting your spirits, keep your head in the game. Uh, remember that stress is not a good thing. And so we're trying to get you away from your stress. It's so easy to be doom scrolling and to buy into all the, the news problems and everything else. So we're just, we, art changes hearts and changes the world. We want you to learn about art. We have been very fortunate because we've had Hundreds of people from around the world tell us they picked up a brush for the first time after watching these segments. We've had hundreds who have um, told us that they hadn't picked up a brush in you know 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, etc., and they've started painting again. So we're really happy about that. We're going to continue to be here as long as we need to be here for you. And thank you for tuning in. My name is Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plein Air Magazine. And we would love for you to subscribe to those. Just Google them or go to plenairmagazine.com or fineartconnoisseur.com. If you can spell connoisseur, you're lucky. It took me a while to figure that out. Have a terrific day. Thanks again to Garen Baker. And go to his website, garenbaker.com.